Every true anime fan goes through a stage where they've consumed every last bit of good anime and then you start getting desperate. For me, this happened around the summer of 8th grade. I sat on my ass all day watching garbage shit fuck like Heaven's Lost Property and High School of the Dead. I mean, if you like that anime, it's fine, but the chances are you're 12 and haven't discovered hentai yet. Anyway, I was scrolling through just anime dubbed and- HOLY FUCK, IT'S EVANESCENCE! I used to watch the Ben 10 AMVs with that- WAKE ME so Oh, it's just anime. Anyway, I checked it out and- What the fuck? What, what the fuck? This- this isn't six girls trying to fuck one whippy team. It couldn't be good anime. I watched it, but for some reason I never finished it. However, I always look back on the show fondly. I definitely liked it, but something stopped me from finishing. Fast forward up to now and I'm filled with the sweet, warm, sticky juices of determination. I need to find out why I stopped watching. And also, I have a really strong feeling that people are going to start finding out about this anime soon, so ha, I better uh, fucking hop on that bandwagon. Everybody, if you're new to the channel, my name is I Have No Friends, and I'm finally doing another anime review. I've refrained from reading or watching any other reviews so I can stay as unbiased as possible, so let's talk about the story. Ergo Proxy is really fucking hard to describe without spoilers, even after watching the series and reading every wiki in existence, so I'm just going to plagiarize off the internet. We start off in a dystopian society set somewhere in the future. Humans exist alongside androids called autorays, but lately a virus has been fucking with the robots and giving them souls. One of our main characters, Riel, is sent to investigate some of these auto rave murders and starts uncovering a little bit too much about her government. One thing spirals into another, and suddenly the plot is thicker than. And suddenly the plot's thicker than. <sighs> Hold on, guys, I'll be right back. If that description sounded boring, that's because it is. I would rather strap a pencil to my dick and have drawn the Mona Lisa without my hands and watch the first seven episodes. It was such an incredibly arduous chore to slog through the first seven episodes, I was on my phone for at least one third of it. To be fair, the first three episodes were fairly interesting and set up a pretty good story, but after that, Jesus Christ, the only thing pushing me forward was the fact that I fucked myself saying I'd do a review last week, but then, at episode eight, the impossible happened. I wanted to move to the next episode. See, while I was cucking myself throughout the beginning of the series, the show was planting little seeds of intrigue and curiosity while introducing completely new elements of the story. And right around episode 8, you start thinking to yourself, I wonder what happens next, I wonder why they panned on this detail for an extra second. And they don't just stop the momentum halfway through, the show keeps you guessing all the way through. Granted, there are some easily predictable moments, but there's also moments like episode 19 where you just have to ask yourself, what the fuck is happening? Little episodes like that just keep you guessing. Parts seeming to have little to no continuity with the last episode completely changed my outlook on the show. In the later part of the series, I even caught Space Dandy vibes and thought, Shinichiro Watanabe has to have something to do with this, and sure enough, the show is created by these two dudes who have worked really closely with Watanabe on Samurai Champloo, Cowboy Bebop, and Space Dandy. The second half of the show felt like a completely different anime, there was moments where I thought, what the fuck, the show has a sense of humor? And I think that's why the show has stayed low-key for so long. The beginning is bound to shake off at least 85% of new viewers. If I showed you a clip for the first half and the clip from the second half, you'd think they're two different seasons or something. It's a good story, but requires a huge investment. The characters are definitely an incredible strong point in this anime. Each character is well thought out and has their own motives. They're complex and every single one of them faces massive development by the end of the show. I find myself only disliking this cunt, but every antagonist in the series is somewhat likable once you truly understand their motives. So let's talk about the main characters. We have Riel. She's a bitch at the start, but I never really disliked her. She's a textbook way to write a strong female lead, you just don't mention the fact that she's strong and female. After going through tons and tons of bullshit in the show, her character development is really satisfying. I also have to note that her female voice actress for the dub is amazing. I think she really nailed this character. Then there's Vincent. He's a massive pussy. But we're also going on this journey with him and we get to watch who he becomes as a character. You can visibly see the character development in this guy and I think that made the show a lot more enjoyable for me. What I really like about these two is I can't tell who the main character is. We go several episodes without seeing each other and it never really bothered me. This was executed really well and felt unique. I should note that by the end of the show there were some minor questions left unanswered, but this wasn't done in a way that made me salty. It just made me question I wonder why they did this and you're left to draw your own conclusions about the characters. I think that's a testament to how well thought out the characters were. But yeah, that's all I gotta say about them, so let's move on. I have some mixed feelings about the art. 
I think the art should set a new standard for good looking anime. While I thought that that time I got reincarnated by a slime looked good, this art has a very different appeal to it that I like much more. It always looks like you're watching a movie despite the anime being 24 episodes long. This applies to the first three episodes especially. There's attention to detail that makes all movements seem human. Little things like pulling Riel's head back or the most realistic facial expression I've seen in anime. In the context of their conversation, this face makes a lot of sense. But I gotta point out that this anime is so fucking dark throughout the duration of the series. I got so sick of looking at it. But I think this may have been on purpose because as the story progresses, the animators are all like, Oh fuck, dude. What? What's up? Dude, did you know we have white crayon? No shit, shut the fuck up. Yeah, dude, we have white crayon, bro. Ah, oh, fuck. <sighs> Should I talk to Tracy? Uh, just, just use it, I guess. Every once in a while, we get to see bright landscapes. This felt super refreshing, and then we're plunged back into the darkness. It's like we're being suffocated again, which, again, may have been the intended effect. Overall, the art's superb, but can get annoying if you know what I mean. Music sort of disappointed me. In an anime set in the future, you expect some fucking wo 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 tracks or something, but not once did we get anything like that. And it's a damn shame because I feel some good music could have remedied the dark vibe of the show. There's one track that stood out to me that sounds like that death note song, but that's about it. In the last few episodes, I think they kind of got their shit together, but it's nothing to write home about. The sound design is also meh, but that might be due to the fact that this was made in 2006. One thing I have to say is that the dub, that's right, the dub, is phenomenal. I prefer almost every anime sub, but I think this may be one of the few exceptions. Listen, I realize saying the show doesn't get better until you're already a third of the way in makes it sound like shit, aight? If someone told me that by letting fleas bite my ball sack for seven hours it starts feeling super good, I'd say, shut the fuck up. Ergo proxy ain't for everyone. I believe the incredibly slow start really stunted the show's growth and prevented it from hitting the mainstream market. And even if you do get past the start, this show still might not be for you. But I think if you're interested after the first three episodes, you might be in for an unexpected treat. This ain't Naruto, you're not getting into fights every episode, this isn't about being the strongest, it's a detective drama. At least for the first half, later the series really broadens up and becomes way bigger than fucking Wally deciding he wants to murder babies. I can truly say that I don't regret watching it and was very satisfied by the ending. My verdict is, if you have absolutely jack shit to watch and you've gotten desperate enough to watch High School DxD, you need to give this show a chance. And if you're not interested after three episodes, fuck it. That's it. That's the video. If you enjoy it, please like, comment, or both. I have no friends and I'm scared of dying alone. Peace out, guys.